Hey guys, it's Species Sims, and we are back with more Mystic Destinies. Oh my god, this is getting so good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. She's so good. It's been two days since that day at the dojo. It's supposed to be my first day of work today, and surprisingly, I don't feel all that nervous. Since we both have work, after the business club meeting was over, we got changed and walked to Veritas together. I look at Tatsuya, who's walking right next to me out of the corner of my eye. Maybe it's because I know he'll be there that I'm less nervous than I normally would be. Or, I mean, than I normally would be. Okay, I wonder what it'll be like to work together. I'm kind of excited. But besides grabbing a bite to eat on the way, we haven't said much to each other. Tatsuya and I seem to both be at a loss for what to say. Everything still feels pretty awkward after that night. Suddenly, I notice a figure in the distance walking towards us. Something about the person strikes me as familiar, but with the distance between us, I can't quite make out who it is. Uh, Tatsuya stops all of a sudden, and I almost walk away without, without him before I realize that he isn't walking next to me anymore. I stop, too, and look back at him. Yukimura, is something wrong? His eyes are focused entirely on the figure in the distance. Wait here. He doesn't even glance at me as he jogs off to meet the person. Is it someone he recognized? How can he even see from this distance? Probably better eyes as a dragon. I squint, trying to get a better look. Ugh. That's... It's Haruna. I fade back the urge to sigh. Of course it's Haruna. I stand awkwardly in place, watching them interact from afar. Whatever it is they might be talking about, I don't think I could guess, even if I tried. I'm not at all sure what to do. Just standing here, watching them, makes me feel weird. Just as I'm contemplating looking away, Haruna moves. In a single step, she moves closer to Tatsuya and wraps her arms around him, pulling him into a hug. No! A strange queasiness settles over me. It doesn't stop even when Haruna lets him go and walks away with a little bow. As Haruna disappears in one of the many different twists and turns of Chawa, I walk up to Tatsuya. It's not hard to notice that Tatsuya is standing rather stiffly compared to the way he usually is. What was that about? Uh... Haruna just wanted to give me the money from the Carnivala staff to my mom again. Hmm, I see. I'm not buying it. Just who is Haruna to you exactly? She's an old friend. Seems like she's something more. Not currently. I try not to frown. The answers are so curt that it doesn't seem like Tatsuya is willing to offer up any more information. Still, something makes me press further. Then, how do you feel about her? Tatsuya is showing unusually unsettled composure adjusts his glasses and shifts from leg to leg. He looks somewhere over my head for a while and sighs. His eyes fall back down to meet mine. I don't really know. I nod. It's not the answer I was hoping for, but it's not the answer I feared the most, either. There's not much else I can possibly say to him, not without making it even more awkward for both of us. With no other choice but to accept what he says, I start walking in Veritas' direction. Tatsuya follows right after me. With his quick stride, he catches up to me in mere seconds. We continue our walk in complete silence. Any semblance of my previous giddiness is now absolutely gone. When we walk into Veritas, we're almost immediately greeted by a smiling Galen. He seems to have been expecting us to arrive just at that moment. Oh, there you two are! Tatsuya gives him a curt nod and strides off to the break room, leaving me behind with the boss. I force myself to tear my eyes away from him and focus on the man before me. When faced with the smiling face of my new boss, I'm made even more aware of how bummed out I feel now. All right, Inara, time to act professional. I look up at Galen with the best smile that I can muster. I'm ready to start work, sir. Galen? Right, he doesn't want to be called sir. I almost forgot. Having seemingly caught on to my little slip of the tongue, he chuckles. Hmm, well, you remembered my little rule, so I'll let it slide this time. The devilish glint in his eyes leaves me wondering what might happen if I had called him sir. Well, I don't think it would be something too awful, I'm in no hurry to actually attempt to find out. Galen claps his hands together, happily. Today I'll leave you in the hands of my very capable assistant manager. Just as he says this, Shinji walks up to us. Yay, Shinji! I like how they all have different colored ties, you know? And they all kind of match them, like Tatsuya's is blue, his is green, like his eyes, and blends with him. His is purple, like his hair. Hers is red, but it kind of goes with, like, her reddish brown kind of eye, just like her brown hair and everything. Shinji will show you the ropes. I look to Shinji, who gives me a curt nod. Yeah, I got this, old man. You go do... Shinji's eyes flit to me for the briefest of moments. 
You go do that thing. June is waiting. June? I look from Shinji to Galen in confusion. Galen sighs rather dramatically at the mention of this June. Again? He doesn't give up, does he? Galen pauses, looking very thoughtful for a moment. Then he laughs. Then I shall oblige! He turns on his heel and walks away with a spring in his step, leaving me with Shinji. See, he just seems like he's a little fabulous, I'm just saying. He is an unusual man, that's for sure. Although the exchange between them has left me thoroughly confused and more than a little curious, I don't think asking would actually get me anything. Before I can say anything, Shinji looks down at me. Let's begin then. Shinji takes me, Shinji takes me behind the counter and starts running me through everything that I could possibly need to know. And be sure to watch yourself here. The steam is incredibly hot, and you don't want to accidentally burn yourself. Shinji is showing me how to work with the coffee maker, and I do my best to memorize everything he's telling me. Shinji suddenly freezes, as if he just remembered something. He should be here any minute. Better start preparing the hot sake. Um, hot sake? Isn't this a coffee house? Shinji laughs. It, it is, sure. Then why would we be serving alcohol? With a glance at the time, he starts preparing everything. Because that's what Professor K orders when he comes in every Thursday. Oh, so that's why. Doesn't really explain it exactly, but fine. Just as Shinji has predicted, the door opens and Hikaru walks into Veritas. He weaves through the tables and takes a seat by the bar. While he deals with that order, I set about cleaning up some of the tables. But my eyes drift toward Tatsuya, who's making some coffee for one of the customers. I feel conflicted. I want to go talk to him, and not at the same time. Maybe I should try talking to him after all. Tatsuya looks up while working and our eyes meet. This is so awkward. I quickly look away and focus on scrubbing the table clean. No, no, definitely not going to talk to him. Maybe some other time. Ugh, this whole Haruna thing is still bothering me. I force myself to stop thinking about Tatsuya somehow, but it still feels like he's always at the back of my mind. Yeah, because he's right behind you, but... Some time passes, and I'm standing next to Shinji when I see him make a very intricate-looking drink, one I had never seen before. My own curiosity wins out, and I decide to go ahead and ask. What is that? It's one of Gale's creations. He calls it the Salamander's something. What? Something? Yeah. Said he literally couldn't think of a name for it. He snaps his fingers, and the drink suddenly lights up in the glass. It looks as if it was molten fire contained within. I can't help but gasp at it. Wow. I'm glad you like it. Shinji hands me the glass. Here, take this to table five, please. I nod and make my way over to table five. Out of the corner of my eye, I catch a glimpse of Tatsuya's blue hair. I pause to look at him neatly stacking cups behind the bar. It's been some time now, but maybe I should go talk to him. But what would I even say? Should I try asking about Haruna again? Haruna, just what is she to him? She calls him by his first name so casually. She even hugged him. You also fell asleep on him. I mean, Jesus, you've got a one-up on her. There's no way she isn't an ex-girlfriend of his. What else could she be? High school, I mean, Jesus. Does she still love him? Does he... Could he still love her? What was that night when he, he held me anyway? A feeling of intense freezing cold in my hand suddenly shocks me. It's so cold it burns. Ow! I instantly let go and the glass I was holding falls to the floor. The glass and its contents are so frozen that they hit the ground like a rock. Oh, no. Uh, when I, I look around, hoping no one saw me drop it or freeze it. When I move to pick it up, someone's hand reaches out and gets it before I can. Shinji looks at the solidly frozen drink in his hand, then at me. Follow me. With no choice, I follow quietly after him, feeling like there's a lead weight in my stomach. He leads me behind the bar counter, way in the back where no one else might hear us talk. Look, you've been distracted from the very start today. I wasn't going to say anything, but whatever it is that's going on between you and Tatsu is clearly making you unfocused. What? How does he... I don't want to do this, but either you get it together or I'll have to sign you to another shift. One that Tatsuya doesn't have. My cheeks burn with embarrassment. Right. Focus. I need to focus. Shinji doesn't say anything else. He unfreezes a drink, which has now been ruined, pours it all out, and sets about making a new one. I take that as my cue to get back to work. I can't believe I, get, I let myself get so distracted by him. It doesn't take me long to get back into the groove, and the day does seem to get better, although I'm overly aware of 
so much as even glancing at Tetsuya's way. Hours have passed by the time I finish collecting the most recently dirty dishes and cleaning off the tables. I start walking towards the kitchen. That's when I see it. Tetsuya arguing with Shinji about something in hushed voices. I'm not close enough to catch even glimpses of their argument, but when they glance at me, I get the sneaky suspicion that it might very well be about me. Shinji's like, dude, just tell her you love her! And he's like, no, can't, not gonna, me, me, me. That's what it is. Could it be Tetsuya was defending me? Maybe not. I can't keep the little smile off my face as I go to the kitchen. After about another hour, things calm down almost to a standstill. So when the bell rings, indicating a new customer, I automatically look to greet them. Oh no. I feel my stomach drop when I see who it is. I knew he was going to show up. Especially because the last time we saw him, he was like, oh, tomorrow. And now it's been like freaking like six months. Katsuna Suki. His lips twist into a smirk when he sees me too. Katsu casually strolls up to me, standing just a little too close. I wasn't expecting to see you here, especially not in a uniform. Yes, well, I work here now. Is there anything you would like to order, sir? That's so cold, Anara. He steps closer, making the distance between us even smaller. I've been thinking about you a lot, you know. Well, it's not the same for me. I told you, Katsu, our relationship is business only. How long are you going to keep saying that? Clearly it goes beyond that. You're delusional, you know that? I prefer the term persistent. All that matters is that I want to go on that date with you this weekend. This guy, he only cares about what he wants. No, thank you. I know that you're into some shady stuff, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. I see a spark of, oh, shit, sorry. I see a spark of surprise and curiosity flash in his turquoise eyes. He leans down to me, our faces now only inches apart. I try to back away, but he grabs my wrist firmly. Suddenly, Katsunosuke feels like an entirely different person. And just what do you know about that? How could you know anything? He pulls me even closer still with a tug. Someone needs to stop this man. Out of nowhere, I see someone's hand on Katsu's shoulder. And before I know it, he's being pulled away from me. His grip on me loosens, and he finally lets go of my wrist. Please don't harass the staff, sir. Oh, Shinji, I love you so much. We wouldn't want things to get stormy. Shinji says this with a smile, but the warning behind it is clear. Katsunosuke doesn't back down. He easily responds with a smile of his own. Oh, what's this? A threat after almost a century of cowering before us? You must be the pride of your people, because he's a mage. What I, what I am to my people is none of your concern. It's no concern of you, or whatever. I don't know exactly what it said, but same difference. At least I know enough not to cause needless destruction from within. Katsu lets out a little laugh and shrugs. Very well, then. I won't harass the staff. He turns to leave, but before walking away, Katsu looks back at me with a smirk. I'll still be waiting for your answer. It's still gonna be no! I nod without even thinking. Katsunosuke saunters away and thankfully leaves Veritas. You are right? Yeah, thanks. Shinji nods and walks off, leaving me standing there alone. But after that whole display with Katsu, Tatsuya refuses to look my way at all. It's around halfway through my shift when Tatsuya comes out of the break room wearing his normal clothes. Oh, I forgot. He's only got a part-time shift. He walks right past me without acknowledging my presence in the slightest. Without sparing me a single glance or word, Tatsuya leaves Veritas. Watching Tatsuya just go like that leaves me with a heavy feeling in my heart. But despite all the negative feelings swirling inside me, I resolve to make it through my very first, albeit rough, shift. To distract myself from my thoughts, I start to scrub the bar area, which helps me keep my mind from going into overdrive. He's still here! It's been like six hours! Seems like you have a lot on your mind, Sparkles the Unicorn. I look up at Hikaru, who's watching me with a little smile from the other side of the bar. I nod, not sure what to say. Something seemed different about Kasima today. Ah, yes. So even Hikaru noticed it then. Hikaru laughs and takes a little sip of sake. I know about love troubles all too well. So, um, maybe you can help me. I need some advice. I awkwardly try to explain the situation between me, Tatsuya, and Haruna, and even Katsu without naming any names. Somehow, I just know who Kara knows who I'm talking about, though. I also explain that for an undisclosed reason, I'll need to take sides very soon, and I'm not entirely sure what to do. Run? Huh? Uh, isn't that a little extreme? Although right now running seems like a very tempting option. He laughs again. Well, if you can't run, then... 
Why not try to think about the problem? Maybe you just need more information. Try to learn everything you can so you can make an informed decision. I see. That does make sense. There's just too much I don't know right now. Thank you, Professor. He gives me a little cheers with his sake cup, and I go right back to work. But even as I work, my mind uh, whirls to process the new information. I think about what it is that I need to know in order to make my decisions, and I come to two conclusions. For my own mental health, I need to know about Haruna. If Tatsuya isn't an option for me, then I want to know as soon as possible. And for the business deal, I either need to know more about Katsunosuke or make a decision with the information I have. Which honestly, after the way he acted today, is more than enough for me. I think about how best to go about these things, and I manage to come up with a few ideas. But one of them is so crazy, I doubt I'll ever have the guts to go through with it. If I did it, I think it would keep Katsu away from me and solve my role in this for good. But I doubt Tatsuya would ever agree to it. For the rest of the night, I try to come up with more ideas, but in the end, only one solution seems like it would end this quickly. That Saturday, I figured I'd do something for myself for once. So today, I called up Emmy and asked her if she had any time to meet me, to which she excitedly replied yes to. We both decided to meet at a restaurant to have lunch together. It's cute. I like this place. But as soon as I get to the restaurant, I can't help but feel a little bummed out. Nothing has changed since that eventful first day of work. I feel so down and not... And now I realize that it's not very fair to Emmy that I show up like this. When I see Emmy waiting for me at one of the tables, she waves very happily to me and slightly, and a slight smile tugs at my lips. Hey, how are you, Inara? I'm okay. How about you? I'm sorry I called you up so suddenly. No, no, it's fine. I was actually happy you called me. But how are you really? The way she says it and the genuine worry in her eyes makes any resolve to struggle with this by myself go away almost instantaneously. I sigh and tell her everything that's been going on with Tatsuya and just everything. Right from the very beginning. Somehow it's a lot easier now that I've told Tatsuya and I realize I haven't had a nightmare in ages. Oh, yeah. As you can see, I have so much going on right now. It's all just such a huge mess. I feel like it's one step forward, two steps back with my powers. I mean, seriously, to freeze the cup on Thursday, even after Yukimura's lesson at the dojo? And he and I are still not communicating like I need. I had no idea that your life is so complicated. I laugh bitterly. If you feel like running away from a mess like me, then feel free. I wouldn't blame you. No, I would never. I just feel terrible about all that bad stuff that's happening to you. I have no idea what to do about the whole Tatsu Katsu mess, but if the thing about your mom and dad is still bugging you, then maybe you should go talk to your dad. Plus, he could give you some advice. I quietly think over her words. Yeah, I think I should. I'll call my dad and see when I can go to his house next. Good. And I think you and Tatsuya need to just hash this all out. Because all the back and forth arguing and ignoring each other that's been going on between you two has to stop. I'm not sure. Oh, come on. You should call him and try to schedule a study session with him to help you with your cryokinetics. Actually, why not do it right now since it's the weekend? You need it anyway, right? She has me there. I nod and fish my phone out of my bag. Wasting no time at all, I call Tatsuya. I'm nervous about what to say. But if I'm formal about it, it won't be weird, right? After a couple of rings, I start to think he might just ignore my call. But to my surprise, he picks up. Hello? Hello, Yukimura. Uh, I'm calling to schedule a study session with you as soon as possible, actually. Also, I was hoping Emmy could join us. My heart beats like crazy. Why are you being so quiet? All right. I'll have some free time in about an hour. Would studying at my place be fine? Oh, sure. Thank you. I'll see you tonight, then. Yes, see you then. Sounds like it went well. Yeah, I guess. He said we should meet at his place later. Never actually been there before. Well, that's a good sign, then. Let's hang out for a bit and go over it later, then. Look at this fancy schmancy apartment. Emmy and I arrive at Takumi and Tetsuya's place after finishing our lunch together. As soon as the door to their apartment is open, we're immediately greeted by a very enth enthusiastic Takumi. Inara, awesome! It's been a while since we hung out. Emmy giggles at his enthusiasm, enthusiasm, and Takumi seems to finally notice her. I think they look, would look cute, wicked cute together. Well, hello, friend of Inara. Takumi Ari, 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 whatever, at your service. 
He does a little bow, and Emmy laughs and follows suit with her own little bow. Emmy Matsuda, tis a pleasure, sir. Yeah, they're ridiculously adorable. After the introductions are over, we all finally notice Tatsuya there, armed with a rather large pile of books. Um, is all of that for studying, Yukimura? That's right. If you guys are going to take up my free time, I'm going to make sure our session is thorough. Well, Emmy looks less than pleased, I feel a sudden burst of determination start to burn in me. Bring it on. Bring it, bitch! <laughs> Ugh, how many hours has it been? A few hours into our study session, night has fallen, and I'm still unable to get my powers to reliably turn on or off. Hey, little birdie. It doesn't seem to matter what I try or how I try it. Nothing works. Taku has been sitting on the couch next to Tatsuya playing video games since he got bored of listening to us. But hearing the frustration in my voice, he presses pause. Hey, guys. Just an idea here, but how about we go out and get Anara a gear crystal? Oh, we could grab some drinks while we're at it. Oh, hell yes! Tatsuya sighs and rubs his eyes. I can't believe I forgot about gear crystals. Takumi laughs and elbows him gently. That's what you get for being so busy all the time. You start to forget things. So how about it? Tatsuya sighs again. All right, I agree. At least to going out to get Sparkles the Unicorn a gear crystal. Um, what's a gear crystal? Oh, I forgot you wouldn't know that. Sorry, it's so weird when you're so used to a thing. It's like what uh, Sakura uses to transform in Sakura Sparkle Cure. That sounds cool, but kind of embarrassing. Emmy giggles. It's not that bad. It's just a flash and you're done. Not some kind of epic transformation. Just wait, you'll see. With that decided, everyone gets ready to go out to Chawa. Takumi takes us through one of the entrances that I don't recognize, and we go uh, in right to a more upscale part of Chawa. Perhaps feeling a bit more like himself, Tatsuya launches into a mini lecture about the district. Were you aware that Chawa is, in fact, the largest supernatural district in Japan? In Japan? Oh, really? Yes, it's also the 27th largest district in the world. Being in the top 30 districts in the world does have its benefits. Like what? It attracts a lot of businesses from other parts of the world, so we end up having easier access to things that might be hard to find in smaller places. Due to that, you can find almost anything in Chawa. From potions to enchanted clothes, items, rare spellbooks for those who need them. There's more things than I can name being sold here, as well as gear crystals, which is what we're going to get for you now. I nod along with his explanation. You see, I had no idea there were so many things here. Could there be more to Chawa than I have yet to see? That, than I have yet to see. Okay. We end up going, uh, Mizushimi, going to Mizushimi Crystals, where Emmy helps me look through the computer to find the right outfit for me. <laughs> Tatsuya is the one who decides on the augments for me. He said they were focused on control and power suppression. And with no clue myself, I had no choice but to trust what he said. After I pay for the crystal, we only barely mouth it out the door when Takumi speaks up. Hey, Inara, why don't you try out your crystal now? What? Now? Oh, I think that's a great idea. Try on your outfit. Just focus your power into it like we said. Well, okay then. I wonder if her outfit's going to be different. I kind of hope it is. I wrap my fingers around the gear crystal and close my eyes. I feel a strange sensation as chilly yet gentle breeze blows through me. Nah, that's the same damn one. I open my eyes and look down. It makes sense that it would be the same one, but... Oh, it worked! Emmy happily claps her hands. You look so cool, Inara! Definitely cool. Takumi elbows an oddly red-faced Tatsuya with a grin. What do you think, Tatsu? You look... The gear looks good. Very functional. Excellent choice. I smile at them. Oh, oh red face, because he's like, she's hot. Thank you for helping me pick it out. I can't wait to properly try it out. We can do a test later, but maybe not in the middle of the street. Oh, of course. I quickly deactivate the gear crystal. Ah, I'm naked! But even though I can't reliably do any magic yet, I'm more excited than ever to finally be able to do magic consciously. They said I would be able to... Able to anyway. Oh, they said I would be able to anyway. I hope it works. Now that that's done, I'll take you guys somewhere special. It's this little bar that's so good. It's mostly frequented by musicians, so there's always someone playing live there. My brother actually works there, and he told me tonight there'll be some good ones on. Maybe I can even get us free food. Free food and live music? I am in. Oh my god, they need to get married. I know that later we're going to be romancing him, but I like them together. They're cute. That does sound like it would be nice. 
Three of us looked at Tetsuya, who sides, sighs and nods reluctantly. Fine, we can go there. Lead the way, Matsuda. Emmy happily obliges, practically skipping ahead of us as she shows us the way. We end up spending quite a few hours in the bar, which as it turned out was called Fox's Tail. As Emmy promised, there was free food and the live acts were pretty good. After stuffing ourselves a little too much, we left the bar to all walk home. And that's when she saw it. The amazingly gorgeous fountain. She asked us all if we could go look at it, and no one could resist the puppy eyes she was giving us. As we walk up to it, I realize that there are couples here and there around the fountain. Oh, she's gonna... Mm. Tetsuya sits down on the edge of the fountain, looking exhausted. It looks relaxing here. Maybe he can finally chill out a bit. Takumi suddenly leans in and whispers in my ear, Here's your chance. Then before I can even turn around to look, I hear a yelp from Emmy. I look around. They're both gone. Where did they disappear off to? I look back to see Tatsuya sitting at the fountain, looking at the water. Ugh. Does he mean what I think he means? What am I even supposed to say? Just kiss him, goddammit! After a moment, I remember Emmy's words earlier today about just taking... Uh, just talking everything through with him and swallow. What? Okay. All right. I can do this. I can do this. I take a deep breath and slowly go towards him. Emmy's words from earlier keep ringing in my mind. I need to talk it out with Tetsuya before anything can change. Oh. I sit down next to Tetsuya. Can we talk for a bit? Tetsuya nods slowly and I take another deep breath. I want to thank you for everything. I never got the chance to thank your family for everything that they did for me. So, thank you. I keep talking before Tetsuya can say anything. I'm afraid... I'm afraid if he does, I'll lose my nerve. I also want to be honest with you about something. You're my partner, so I should have told you. I've been having these random losses of control with ice powers for a while now at night. Tetsuya looks concerned, but he just quietly listens while I continue. Oh my god, just fucking kiss him. Knock him in the fountain! It's kind of funny that it's ice that I'm best with when it's also ice that I'm losing control with. I wonder why that is. I'm sorry. For all my bravado, I'm hardly there for you as a partner. I think I just bit off more than I can chew. You do seem to have a habit of doing that. Tatsuya chuckles and finally a smile appears on his lips for the first time tonight. Yeah, I guess I do. I do too. I overload myself with work all the time. I look up at the stars. But I'm glad. I'm glad that you did, or else we wouldn't have met like this. Wouldn't have had the chance to get to know each other like this. I look back down at Tetsuya. Can I ask you a question? Who is Haruna, really? Tetsuya sighs, and after a short silence, begins to explain. Haruna is my ex-girlfriend. In my second year of high school, I became friends with the other pianist in my music club, Haruna Kuno. I'm not sure that I can say exactly why she liked me, but she was always kind to me, so we started dating. But one day I said something to her that ended her up hurting her a lot. You know how I can be. We broke up then. It was bad. To the point we couldn't be friends anymore. I've avoided her and all romance since. Oh, I see. So I was right. They did date. You can't be friends with your ex-girlfriends! It's not how it works! Haruna's been... She says she just wants to make up, be friends again. But I feel like she also wants something more. I don't know that I'm worthy of that kind of thing. I'm sure that I just hurt her again. Oh, Tatsuya. But even if you think that way, do you feel like you want a relationship with her? I used to think so, but maybe all I feel now is guilt. If that's the case, then, I think I finally know what to do about this whole... Kasima Yukimura mess. The idea I had back at work pops in my head, and thanks to Tetsuya's honesty, I feel like I finally have the courage to go through with it. Fucking kiss him. What? Thanks for being honest with me. There's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. It's about this business deal. After meeting your family and coming to understand their position, I can hardly condone what Katsunosuke is doing when none of you seem to want it. I'm just so sick of this whole mess, and I don't know what Katsu wants from me exactly, but I don't want to deal with him anymore either. And most importantly, I don't want to let your family lose everything. I take a deep breath. I can do this. Just ask him. My cheeks start to burn uncomfortably hot. She's going to, like, ask him to, like, break into Katsu's house or something like that. She's not going to ask him to date her. I don't know. I actually have an idea on how to solve all of this. It's kind of crazy, but... Tatsuya, will you say that you're my boyfriend? Oh! Oh my god, that's not... I 
imagine she was gonna be like, let's break into his house and get some dirt on him. This is a crazy idea. Be my boyfriend. <gasps> Look how shocked he is. So that Katsuna Katsunasuki will back off. Tatsuya looks so shocked, but somehow I managed to keep on going. I don't think it would work with any other guy, because I don't think he would stop if it was anyone other than you. But if we do this, it'll send a strong message of who I'm throwing my support behind as Rokuro's daughter. I don't look at Tatsuya. I don't think I can. My heartbeat is racing wildly, and I don't remember being this nervous about something in my whole life. The fact that he doesn't say anything makes it ten times worse. Oh my god, kiss her. Just goddamn kiss her. You, you can break it off any time then, and... Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Fangirling! <laughs> I was like, just goddamn kiss her! <laughs> I'm, I can't. I can't. I can't handle this. Strong hands grab me and pull me close. Hot lips on mine. My mind goes blank. I know, I can't handle it either. All there is, all that seemed so important just seconds ago, seems to melt away at the feeling of Tetsuya kissing me. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. His lips on mine. They're so soft and cool. I can't think. I realize that I don't want it to end. After a moment, one that feels all too soon, Tetsuya pulls away. S sorry. I shake my head. Um, can I take that as a yes, then? Tatsuya nods. His face looks as red as mine feels right now. On one condition. It can't be fake. I I genuinely like you. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I fall off my couch. This is so adorable. We have a lot in common. I feel like I can get along with you pretty well. So I can't just pretend. Oh. Butterflies dance in my stomach, and I realize that I'm smiling. I think, no, I know that I like you too. I probably have for a while now. My god, this is so awkward and adorable. Before we can get any further, two very loud cheers come ringing out from the bushes. <laughs> I love the fact that those wackadoodles are watching from the bushes. Ah, you know, I mean, that's that's so fitting for them. Woo! It's about freaking time. Takumi and Emmy come out of hiding and Tetsuya and I separate almost immediately. We get up standing awkwardly next to each other as the two intruders grin at us. We totally saw everything, guys! Inara, I didn't think you'd go and ask him out when I told you to talk things out! I well, um... The rest of the night is spent like that, enduring endless teasing from Takumi and Emmy. But despite the teasing, I can't stop smiling. How can I? Tatsuya and I feel the same way about each other. I didn't expect it, but I couldn't be happier. I hope that I made the right decision. You did. But for now, I'm more than happy to just enjoy the moment with my boyfriend and friends. I know, it's like brand new love is always like the best. You're like, ha 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 